Uh, Ken, you're a self-proclaimed geography wonk. Uh, how does that manifest itself in your life? Uh, you know, it actually impacts my life in a surprising number of ways. If I go into a room with a map anywhere in it, I'm just hypnotized. Like, I can't look away. Um, so in a map library like this, I, I'm very confused. You know, there's, there's stimulus on all sides. I, I, I get very nervous if I don't know which way north is. You know, coming into a new city from the airport, I want to know where the roads are, where the highways are. Um, it's just a very spatial way of seeing the world. So maps help orient you in, in space and place? Yeah, you, they give you some sense of setting, you know, where you are, where you're going to go next, where you haven't been yet. Uh, I like to travel, and you know, I've traveled a lot ever since I was a kid, and I'm sure that feeds into it. And what draws you to the maps themselves? You know, that it starts back further than I can remember. You know, I think before I could read, I liked looking at maps. I remember a little jigsaw puzzle map of the U.S., you know, the kind that has oranges on Florida and palm trees on California, and I, would, I, I could just play with that for hours, maybe even before I knew it represented a place. So it's obviously just something about the map itself, the, the beauty of it, the order of it. And I remember liking the detail of it, you know, the idea that no page of the encyclopedia had as many facts on it as, as one map, you know. And uh, I think that's the first time I ever remember just the sheer pleasure of liking to look at a wealth of information. I think you could draw a straight line from that first map all the way to, to Jeopardy. So it's their precision that you liked. Yeah, I, li the, I like the sense of accuracy, you know, and obviously that's not always true, but there's a sense that you're seeing the world, you know, you're seeing the parts of the world you can't see beyond your little horizon a few miles away. This is the big picture. Yeah. I've read that the so-called geography nerds go on various quests. Some try to visit all the U.S. Co counties or some try to visit all the World Heritage Sites. What's your holy grail? Uh, I met a guy once who was going to every Denny's. And I thought that was the most amazing thing, you know, <laughs> like, well, finally, to go to every Denny's. They're all exactly the same, but uh, I had a professor who was going to go see every Vermeer in the world. And to me, that seemed much worthier, you know. So if I was going to pick one, it would be that, to see every Vermeer. And there's not that many. There's a few dozen, so it's workable. You talk to a lot of, and you meet a lot of uh, geography wonks, geography nerds in your, in your work, in your life. Uh, any common traits among you? Uh, it was surprising because I'd, I'd meet people with these varying kinds of nerdy geographic hobbies. You know, some were obsessed with the interstate system, others with GPS games. Uh, you know, they'd all have different kinds of, of, of you know, ment mental illnesses, basically. <laughs> but, uh, but they were all very much the same kind of person. They would describe exactly the same childhood, fixating on the maps very early, liking that sense of authority when they had the road atlas and the backseat and knowing which way they were going even when mom and dad were lost. So I think there must be a chromosome for it, you know, something, uh, something about brain chemistry, some, some way of spatially orienting these map people that makes map, uh, uh, maps a, a source of pleasure for them and not like boredom or frustration like they are for most of us. You ever meet somebody and hear what they're, what they're interested in and say, that's really just nuts? <laughs> I guess the closest to that would be the road geeks I talk to because, uh, you know, these people are obsessed with every detail of the interstate system, you know, the, the numbering of the off-ramps. And, uh, you know, they can tell a GE road uh, street lamp from a Westinghouse one from half a mile away, and they can tell when the font changes on the, on the street signs, and uh, no detail is too small. They want to drive in every mile of every freeway. And, um, and to me, that, that, you know, even for someone who likes maps like me, that, that borders on the trivial, but they get an amazing amount of pleasure out of it in knowing the history of these places. Today, with satellites and GPS and all that sort of thing, uh, is the romance of map production sort of lost? I mean, maps were originally tied to exploration, right. and now they're just sort of moving things around with a mouse. Uh, is, there, is there the romance still there? I think there is. You know, I think new technologies might be the last gasp of, of map romance, you know, because you can go on Google Earth now and you can see things that maps have never been able to show you. You can see weather and traffic moving across a map in real time. You can dive through the Grand Canyon or between the, the skyscrapers of Manhattan. Um, and uh, you we're discovering things on Google Earth now, and then we see them on real Earth. You know, Roman ruins and lost jungles and meteorite craters. These are things that people find, armchair explorers find on Google Earth, which scientists then confirm uh, outdoors. So I think there is still, you know, there is still a, a place for map nerds to explore. Old maps are sometimes very precise, even though they were not done with satellites and GPS. Uh, how does that, how did that happen? Uh, how do you think about, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, in a lot of cases, that's still a big mystery, you know? Uh, very long dissertations are still being written on how, uh, you know, there's, there's a map uh, written, uh, you know, just a few years after Columbus that somehow shows the west coast of South America very accurately. And today we look at that and think, how is that possible? You know, no European had ever been there. Um, and obviously the explanation is space aliens. But not everyone agrees with me on this point. Um, you were on Jeopardy for 74 games in a row, and you, you won 74 games in a row. 
with all this stuff with the maps, how do you have room in your brain for the rest of the trivia that you know? <laughs> I often feel like maps are sort of the skeleton, you know? Like when I learn a new fact, the first thing I think of is where does that go? You know, like, oh yeah, Hong Kong, you know? And I associate it with other things I know or remember about Hong Kong. You know, I, I tend to categorize things by, by place, not so much by time or by topic. So I actually think that you know having that organization of the world that way is a is a good place to it's a it's a shelf it's a shelf you know it's a big IKEA shelf to put other facts on. You ever get lost? I do get lost, and my wife always makes fun of me because usually I'm the one being like, Mindy, that's north, turn left. What are you doing? You know. Um, so when I get lost, she's very very happy. I knew it was left. I knew it. Thanks very much. It was a pleasure.